Hi, I'm Priscilla Charming Cheek. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am very excited with the launch of my very first full length written pattern and this tutorial, the Look My Wallet. Now the Look My Wallet was inspired by Lynn's Handmade, which is like fitting because my very first bag that I ever made was the H2O to go by Lynn's. And for a few years now, I've been an admin, volunteer admin in Lindsay's group, and I've been on her tester team and have just been blown away by the entire bag making community and especially inspired by Lindsay and then our fellow admin, Nikki Kinder. When Lindsay came out with this little cell phone sling, this is her design here, the cell phone sling itself. I knew that it would be the perfect accompaniment to this little wallet that I've been trying to write for about a year. And Lindsay and her husband Aaron have so graciously agreed to allow me to be their very first guest designer. And the pattern will be distributed exclusively through Lynn's Handmade. So you just purchase it at lynnshandmade.com. I'll have a link in the description box and I'll also have a link to all of the materials that I'm using today. This pattern was written for beginners by beginner sewing friends. I have used a special pattern shape which reduces the bulk down so that there are never more than three layers of leather cork or vinyl. Now it is important that you use leather cork or vinyl for this pattern because it has raw edges and that means you can't use something like cotton which would fray over time. The pattern instructions will print with printable pattern pieces that you can cut out yourself or I'm also including SVGs and PNGs so that you can use them if you'd like with a digital cutting machine like a Cricut, a Brother Scan and Cut, or a Slip. I'm also including a projector file for display. It doesn't have the layers. It's not a fancy projector file because it's a really simple pattern. Also in the instructions at the end is a set of just quick run through steps. So if you've already made this pattern before and you don't need to read through all, I think it's like 12 pages of instructions, you can go right to a single page and I'm gonna walk you through in just the bare bones steps and let you know what you need to do. I also have a keychain version, which eliminates the swivel strap altogether. It still holds three cards and cash. Your cash goes in here, two cards in the front and one card in the back. I also have a version for a cell phone wallet. So this attaches with three M adhesive. This does reduce your card capacity down to two, but it still carries some cash. So this is great for concerts and those kinds of things. Slip it into your back pocket and you're good to go. I don't know that I'm gonna have this done by the time that I need to have the pattern turned over to Lindsay so she can do her magic with publishing it, but it would also make a great Yeti wallet or Stanley Cup wallet. You just might need to make those last little modifications on your own, but there will be instructions for modifying it so that it fits a belt. So with that, with nine pattern pieces, two pieces of hardware and very little material, you've got yourself a great little look mall wallet for hands-free, on-the-go travel. Here's what you're gonna need. Okay, so this is the almost final version of the pattern, but not quite, so ignore this part here. But the pattern is fully illustrated, and it comes with every step that you need to know in order to make this, this pattern here. The, Starting off strong, we've got the list of materials and notions that you need, as well as necessary tools and supplies and optional ones. The final version of the pattern diagram is in, going to include an icon to indicate which uh, direction your pattern needs to go if you're using directional materials. So to line up with the version that you're going to be receiving, I've added that same flower pot here to each of these pieces so that you can follow along as we sew. The one that's most confusing is this body piece. The hole here is at the top and it's easy to get confused. So that's why we've added this. And Nikki Kinder has encouraged me to add this little guy to each of the pattern pieces. So you can thank Nikki for that great suggestion. When we finish the wallet, this is going to come around here and is going to be the flap closure. And so when we're working with it, it's a little bit counterintuitive. If you have directional fabric, this needs to be upside down and the hole at the top is the top of the pattern piece. This is the back pocket. This is the strap slot, the tack bar, the cash pocket, the card accent, the front pocket, the swivel snap, 
um, tab, excuse me, and then this is Ollie Fun material, and this is going to be your card sling material. Now, Ollie Fun does not have a direction print to it, it's just plain, and some of you may not know what Ollie Fun is, so I want to talk about that for just a moment. Ollie Fun is a very inexpensive material. It costs next to nothing, really, and it really costs nothing if you have a used grocery sack that you might want to kind of pilfer from for your first go round. It's the exact same material as these reusable tote bags for the grocery store. All right, so that's it for the pattern pieces. You're also going to need thread and a full bobbin and clips, double-sided tape, or this is a little like scrapbooking tape adhesive. This works too. Just before filming, I lost my 1 8 inch tape, so I've cut this quarter inch tape down into small pieces so that the tape will stay out of my stitch line as I'm stitching. You're gonna need spring snap set, or you can use um, an alternative that I have mentioned in the pattern. And the snaps come with the setting tools and the hole punch that you'll need. If you're using an alternative that doesn't come with a hole punch, then you'll also need to add a, tool, a hole punch to your list of tools. You need a 5 8 inch or 1 inch swivel. So the pattern pieces that uh, the pattern piece here for the tab is based on a 5 8 inch tab. That's the measurement here, but you can also use a 1 inch. You would just need to widen this tab to 1 inch. You're also going to need just a couple pieces of scrap interfacing. Uh, whatever interfacing you prefer, this is Decoville Light. And if you're using an interfacing that is fusible, then you're going to need to have an iron to apply it. Alternatively, you can just use some duct tape. You're also going to want to have a one inch by six inch ruler. This is my favorite one by Sopal Therapy, and it includes um, fractional marks here to help you better line up your sewing project. And this is super helpful. You're going to need a rotary cutter, something to cut your materials out with if you're not using a Cricut. You're going to need masking tape. You really need this. This is like lifesaver for this pattern. I would encourage you, if you're a beginner sewer and you're not quite sure how to get your seam allowances great, use this quarter inch quilting foot. It will help you because it has a built-in guide here for both an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch. I've included a suggestion for a lighter, and that's to help remove some of these fuzzy bits, but you can see down here, I did it before you got here, and I already scorched it. So I do have a disclaimer about that, about being very careful with your materials, um, because some of these can kind of go quickly, but you can see there by running a flame, I can get rid of those little snaggly bits kind of quick. This is also great to melt your string, or your thread rather, um, to help keep your knots tight. If you're sewing with vinyl, you may want to use this. It will really help your foot just glide right along and prevent any kind of mishaps. The other thing you can use, and this is much cheaper, is sewing machine oil. So you'll just rub this right along where you're going to stitch just a little tiny dab and you'll be amazed at how much this helps you sew those tricky vinyls. Now, Lindsay Secluna had a great idea. You can see that these profiles here are somewhat tricky. And Lindsay had the idea that if you simply went from the pattern um, dimensions, so the width times height, and just cut yourself rectangles to match, you could come back and then easily cut um, a shape, like to cut in here so that you could get the corners. That might be faster for you than cutting these all by hand. Or you can alternatively just use something like this as a template and then cut your corners that way. And this is in the pattern. It's called Start With Style, Decorative Steps to Consider First. If you were edge painting, this is what you would want to do before you start sewing. So on the front pocket, you would want to edge paint here, on the strap slots, along here and here, on the back pocket, along here, on the swivel tab, on these long edges here, on the tack bar, top and bottom, on the card accent on the bottom, opposite of this part here. And then on the cash pocket, if you wanted, you would bend here and then you would edge paint here and then also on the bottom here. Now the pattern, the instructions also talk about bag tag placement here at these decorative steps. We'd wanna take care of that now. 
And so if you're doing it on the front pocket here, this is where the snap is going to go. So you're not gonna have much room. A tag of this size simply won't work, but a smaller tag could, and you could put it here. On the body, again, this is the top, and at the end it will form the flap. So you could place your tag somewhere around here. You could also put it on the back if you didn't want to have it as prominent on the strap slot. But again, you would wanna be mindful that it's perhaps maybe a little bit um, less high than this tag is here. On your cash pocket, so that you could see it when you opened it up, you could put your tag here. And those are the best places that I've thought of for the bag tag placement. It is not necessary to add a bag tag. Do not feel like you need to, but if you wanted to, that's where I think it would work best. Okay, up next in our decorative steps that are completely optional that you don't have to do is the top stitching. So this is just decorative here, and I purposely am showing you what it looks like when you backstitch versus um, tie your threads off in the back. So here you can see where that backstitch goes across, and it doesn't make for the nicest, 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 nicest stitches. And you can see that again here. So instead, it's preferable to really pull these strings to the back let me show you how to do that so you leave yourself a nice long threads here don't use your automatic cutter if your sewing machine has one and then you are going to tug this is the bobbin i'm going to tug on that and then you can see that it kind of loops that front thread all the way back so once we have these here we're just going to tie a knot in them and then that will secure our stitches i'll meet you back here in just a second when i finish that step I've gone ahead and I have knotted off all of those threads in the back. And then what I wanna do really quickly is just run a very brief flame right over those knots just to kind of melt that polyester thread and have it kind of crimp down and really secure that knot. Now I was able to get the nice distancing here on either side of the slit because I used this foot. When you're using this foot, the needle is going to come right down here in the middle and then you use this area here or this area here as your measurement. It will ride right along here with that needle right in the center, giving you a consistent stitch that's a quarter of an inch from the edge of this guide to the, where your needle is hitting in the center. One of my hopes is that by creating this pattern for beginners, if you just have been kind of roughing the seam allowance and not really understanding the critical role that it plays, you must use the right seam allowance for this pattern. Another thing that you can do is you can come along here and you can use your quarter inch guide and you can use some disappearing ink and then kind of mark in where your quarter inch line is. Sew along that line that you drew when you're done and then at the end just either use water to have it go away or if it's air erased just give it enough time for the air to um, do its magic. We are done with all of the optional things. From here on out, this stuff is pretty much required. Our first required step is to go ahead and add our snap to the front pocket. We are not, and I have this in the instruction in lots of places, we are not adding a strap here. I know that if you love to be efficient with your time, it's like Crystal, I already have all the pieces out. Why don't I just go ahead and add the snap now? It won't work. There's other things that are going to come between the snap and this, and you have to let those things come into play first. So the reason for the interfacing is to reinforce the holes where the spring snap is going to go so that over time it doesn't wear out and pull through. When I was editing the, editing the tutorial, I noticed that I didn't have the best angle for the snap, so I'm redoing that portion. So you want to first punch a hole because you need to get through that interfacing that you added. And this is my arbor press that I'm using. I have a tutorial where you can see a better angle of the, of the arbor press, and I will have that link in, in the description. Sorry, I keep moving you. So I've added my hole, and to this piece, we add the stud portion of the spring snap. So you have this long post here. That is going to go from the back. Pretend that that is the interfacing or duct tape. Don't use masking tape. Um, so, and then you need to fit the stud piece over that post and put that on. 
And then your setting tools come with an anvil, a two-sided anvil. This side is conical and it fits inside this area here, this hollow section of the post. The other side is for the button side of this snap tab or spring snap, and I will show you that when we get to that step. So I'm going to place the conical part of the anvil right underneath that. And then it comes with two setting tools. This one here is for the stud, so we're gonna go ahead and use that. I simply place it over there, bring this down, press, and that's is super quick and easy. Okay, so that's for that piece. All right, this is now starting section B. And for here, this is our card accent. I flipped it around to the wrong side. And this notch is going to come over here and it's going to sandwich our sling material. To get it to lie a little bit better, I am going to just put this straight edge here on either side of this notch and very, very lightly score the back of it. very lightly. You do not want to cut that notch off. And then now I need to add a piece of double-sided tape. I am suggesting that you put it here so that it stays out of your stitch area. Okay, so then we need to take the backing off. And then for the card sling, the notched section is going to be at the bottom. And right now for the card accent, you're using this straight edge. And you want this part to be the wrong side of the card accent and the wrong side of the card sling. And you wanna put it right up where that fold is. It's very important that this part be straight if it's not straight and you don't have an equal distance here, then your card is going to sit mm, cockeyed inside of the card sling. Okay, so that's fine. And then we're gonna fold it down here. So we need another piece of double-sided tape. Fold it over. Oh, I didn't quite get it. If you're new here, I make mistakes all the time, which is why <laughs> I don't really do sewing tutorial videos. So do better than that. So on this side, you need to have it up just a little bit more than I did. Okay, then hold it in place with this. And while we're on the subject of me messing up and <laughs> not being the best at actual sewing precision, I am counting on you guys to not laugh too hard. I am using bright white thread so that you can see what I'm doing. And that includes all of my mistakes, but it's not gonna look as pretty. It's not gonna look pretty anyways. I've got a ridiculous number of colors here just so you can follow along with the pattern pieces, but you know what I mean. Okay, so we finished that. And then now we have to come up here and stitch in an eighth inch seam allowance on the top and bottom of this side here. Now we need to start on steps uh, B, section B, steps five through seven, and that's adding the card sling to our body. Um, pretend you don't see that wonky stitching. Pretty much the rule of thumb here is going to be whenever we are looking at the right side of our card accent, this is the wrong side and this is the right side, we're also looking at the right side of our card sling if you've gone with a material that has directional print. So here is our body, and this is the top of the body, and the measurement for this is going to be in the pattern instructions, and I'm not going to give them here, but this is going to flip upside down like this, and this little notch is going to fit right there, cradling that hole for the spring snap. It's going to be important that you are getting this centered nicely here. and that it's straight across so that when we fold this up later in the step like this, 
it's going to form a nice even fold here and our card is going to fit in there in a way that isn't tilted. When we're working from this point forward until we go and fold this up, this piece is always lying flat and smooth. It's remaining centered here left to right and this is always going to be down here out of the way so that we don't accidentally stitch it in the wrong spot. Okay, I've got it in the right spot, and now I want to add just a little bit of masking tape up here to keep it right where it's supposed to be. I don't want to have the masking tape way down here because this is actually forming the kind of faux lining for our cash pocket. When our cash pocket is on here later, and we look inside and put our money in, we're going to see that material. Now, uh, there is directions about this in the written instructions. If you liked what the back side of your body looked like and you didn't want to see this material because this is going to be maybe not as pretty as the back side of your body, then I have a tip that we're going to use later on. But for now, it's important that you keep it here so that we have the right measurements when we fold this up. Okay, starting section C, the cash pocket placement. So I've already kind of gone over this a little bit already, but you're going to put it here and make sure that the corners and the top and the sides are all flush aligned, and then you're just gonna simply clip it in place. Now, the clips can dent some materials. It's really important for this wallet that you're using leather, cork, or vinyl because those materials don't fray on the edges. You can't use cotton for this project as it's written. So your clips, if you leave them in there too long into especially soft vinyl, it will indent them and it might be a permanent indentation. Something you can do instead is maybe use these small clothes pins. They act as a clip, but they don't kind of bite in as hard. This combined with the masking tape that we're going to use later is a really good alternative. And if you don't have these clips already, which can be expensive, it's a good way to kind of get around the need for fancy sewing machine supplies. Next up is section D, and this is our swivel tab assembly. So I'm threading our swivel tab onto the swivel hook. And here it is, and you can see that if we were using a directional print, that it's great on this side, but when we flip it over, it's upside down on this side. This is going to be considered the wrong side for this pattern purpose. But if you are just using a plain fabric without any kind of directional print, there isn't a wrong or right side. Now, the next step is to sew this at an eighth inch seam allowance on each long side. You don't need to sew across. You can if you want, but you don't need to. If you do, you're going to need a narrow zipper foot to do that. The reason why it's not needed is that your stitches, when they come up here and here, are going to act like stops. So that swivel tab isn't going to be able to go down any further. So going across is just simply um, personal preference. And I'm also going to go ahead and add a rivet here to further kind of, just kind of a decorative touch. It's really not necessary. I then added my stitching and it worked fine. And now I'm going to add the optional rivet. So I am using just a little tiny rivet. And the reason is, is that this material isn't very deep and I can't use a really tall rivet because then it would bend and not work right. So I'm just using a little tiny guy and you can really put it wherever you want, keeping in mind this is the tack bar and it's gonna sit about here. And so kind of wanna find your center space. I'm just gonna use the flower for giggles. Adding my hole. Adding my rivets. This is my anvil for my little rivets. And this is my setting post. Okay, and just like that, our rivet is set and we are ready to move on to section E. Okay, we left off with our body looking like this and we are now gonna flip it over for section E. Voila. 
What we're wanting to make sure didn't happen is that our clips don't cause this kind of bubbling here. Precision is key with this pattern. So we really need to make sure that everything is lying flat and smooth. Okay. You're going to want to check your clip situation often throughout these next few steps. Okay, so the first stack, piece that we're going to stack is our back pocket. We're being very careful that we're aligning the body, contoured edges, and bottom of each piece together. Go ahead and clip. Now, I designed this with this funny shape with our domestic sewing machine friends in mind. Because I've notched out this area here, at no point will we have more than three layers of fabric at any time, and that reduction in bulk is going to make this accessible for everybody. So we want to make sure, though, that we're not giving the secret away and that we're really taking our time to place the strap slot within those notches nicely. When we have it where we want it, let's go ahead and clip it. And we're ready to move on to the next piece. Okay, up next is the tack bar and the swivel tab. We are using our back pocket piece as our landmark. Our tack bar is going to come here. And then our swivel tab is going to come in here. We're going to push it down and then back it up just a little bit. We do want to make sure that this is centered. So I'm going to take time with my ruler and make sure that there's an equal distance on each side before I proceed. I liked where it was centered here, but I want to draw your attention to how this is sitting now. So I need to take the time and make sure that this gap isn't there. So I either need to bring this corner of the pocket up or the tack bar down. I'm going to use my ruler and find the proper placement. The reason why I'm not showing you the ruler on screen is because then that would allow somebody to skip purchasing the pattern and just go off of the measurements and then make their own. So if you're wondering why I'm not showing the ruler, that's why. But do take the time before we proceed. We're making sure that we don't have any more than three layers stacked at any one point that everything is aligned nicely with the piece next to it, and that everything is straight, even, and centered. Okay, that's looking a lot better. We are now ready to go ahead and add our eighth inch top stitch for the tack bar at the top and the bottom going across. Don't do the sides because we're gonna do that all at once later. I'm gonna turn it over and check my work before I begin with the stitching. I wanna make sure that this is nice and straight. Our tack bar stitches are going to stitch the bottom of the cash pocket closed and at the same time tack down this card sling to make it lie flat. So we want to make sure that it's also in the right position. I would suggest that you go ahead and add some masking tape because that's going to keep all of these things from shifting when we have to move clips out of the way in order to stitch. We have stitched here the tack bar and if we turn it over you can see here that we've stitched these parts of the inside of the wallet. I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more masking tape here. The masking tape is your friend. Now that we've stitched this, we don't have to worry about the tape getting in the way. So we can go ahead and go to town and give ourselves just a little bit more security. This also keeps the swivel tab from flopping down later as you're sewing and just creating chaos. Welcome to step F. So the most critical part of this step is that your, the bottom of the fold here is at the exact precise mark or distance that's referenced in the pattern. If you don't do that, then your card is going to sit up too high. So say for instance that maybe your fold was up here when it instead it needed to be down here. Your card will sit up too high and then your flap won't be able to come down and this hole won't meet where your snap is. So it's very important that you get this part right. If this isn't right and say that this was up too high and that this section here was too short, the best thing to do would be to cut this here, add a little bit more material, 
and then go ahead and put it together, sew it back together, and then bring this up to where it needs to go. It's better to have this a little bit too long than too short because all of this has to go right up here and butt up next to each other and it has kind of a chain reaction effect. So if you were to bring this down to make up the gap, then your pocket down here is gonna come down. This card isn't gonna fit right and it's just gonna be kind of wonky. So discipline is key here. Take the time to do your measurements and to make sure that you're sitting right where you need to sit for this. I promise to tell you the trick about getting rid of this liner if you didn't want it to be shown as the inside of your cash pocket. So, and this is also completely illustrated in the pattern instructions. At this point, if you don't want someone to see this because you like the look of your body, just go ahead and trim the card sling material right here and that will then kind of take it out of there with no harm, no foul. There's no problem with doing that. But I want to have this as my liner, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it here. And that was a suggestion of Lindsay Sakluna, so I wanna thank Lindsay for that genius idea. And this is step G. This is the placement of our front pocket. And again, just like before, we're butting up right next to the underside of the piece next to it, but we're not overlapping. We're making sure that our bottom corners and side edges align nicely. And when we have it where we want it, we're gonna go ahead and clip it. Now, if you get here and you're, for some reason, things didn't work out right, and this piece is coming down too far, go ahead and trim this when you're all done rather than taking this and overlapping this piece. It's better to trim a sliver down from here than it is to overlap these. And again, that all has to do with that card placement. You're going to be using a quarter inch seam allowance when we sew the perimeter and that's going to help where that card sits in this front pocket. And the sling is where the card sits in this um, sling pocket here. We are almost done. Okay, we are on step H. And for step H, it's the last sewing step. We're sewing the perimeter of the look mock. Now, in the instructions, I tell you that you can just go ahead and sew with the body facing up, the right side of the body facing up, all around the entire perimeter, starting with the tack bar. And that's gonna be just fine. But what that means is that the flap is going to have one set of stitching, so your top thread, and when you turn it over and the unit gets closed like this, then your front pocket, the little bit that's shown here, is going to have the bobbin stitching. If you don't want that, then you need to do it a little bit differently. What you'll want to do is start sewing again here with the body facing up with your top thread and go all the way around at a strict quarter inch seam allowance and then stop here. And then turn it over. And then with your top thread here, with this facing up, then sew this area until you meet up with where you stopped. And then that way your nice um, threads will be here on the top. That's just an option. I'm gonna sew it the way I have it in the pattern, just so that you can see what it looks like and what I'm talking about when we're all said and done. Taking one last look to make sure that nothing has shifted and that I'm good to go before I start sewing. In the pattern, I have it every time when we're stitching, I'm telling you what the seam allowance is and then what the recommended stitch length is. I have 3.5. You could certainly use a five here if you want. I just like the 3.5 because it's a little bit tighter since it is a structural step and not just top stitching, but you can use 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, whatever you prefer. Again, if you're using vinyl, something sticky, this stitching is going to be really important. So add that little bit of lubrication if you need it. And be sure that you're making positive that you are no more than a quarter of an inch seam allowance because if you take a greater seam allowance, then your cards simply aren't going to fit. Okay, so here is mine. I'm going to start at the tack bar here. Slide this out. I have my fabric up against this guide, so I know I've got a quarter of an inch. I 
I'm feeling as I'm doing this and I can feel that that under those under layers want to shift a little bit so I am gonna make sure before I move on that everything is sitting where it's supposed to okay that's why that masking tape is so important and I forgot it but you sh I should have put masking tape on the inside as well I want to make sure that my masking tape though doesn't extend into where I'm going to be stitching okay let's do it If you're using this foot, before I get started, if you're using this foot, do make sure that you've shifted your needle over so that the needle lands in there. I've broken so many needles by forgetting to do that. All right, let's go. When you're getting down here, you want to with your needle down all the way, turn a bit, and then turn. So I took two stitches on the diagonal, and now I'm going to keep going forward. I'm going to get this masking tape out of the way. This is why you don't want to have bright white contrasting thread so that people can't really see as much whether you get your sides your diagonal stitches exactly right i think i need to take one more and then two diagonal oh i did three <laughs> okay okay there we go. Whew, I didn't say a bad word though, so that's good. All right, let's keep going. Is anybody else holding their breath? I'm holding my breath. Oh, I hate sewing on camera, which is funny for somebody with a YouTube channel. Okay. Okay, straight stretches though, straight stretches. I've got those down. Okay, I'm getting close to where I started. I don't want to go into that stitch because I want to be able to pull my threads through. I am going to lift up. I am not going to use my automatic cutter and I'm going to pull away so that I have plenty of room, have plenty of extra string so that I can tie my knots. Alrighty, so we have it all sewn together and you can see what I mean here about that bobbin thread. You will want to go ahead and come here and kind of trim this little extra off the cash pocket that's showing from the front flap so that your front flap looks really nice. So anywhere that you have a little bit extra, just go ahead and trim that up so it looks good. And then you can see what I was talking about here. When we fold it now, you can see the bobbin thread here and then the top thread on the flap. Next step is just go ahead and add our spring step. And that's actually the final step of the pattern instructions. So we've already have our hole here. So we're going to punch the hole all the way through. Just like that. And then, and this is important, the button side of the snap is on the outside of the body. Turn it over and then you're just seeing this post here. Then you're going to put the spring snap part on top of it. With our double-sided anvil, we're going to use the cup side so that it doesn't damage the nice part of our button. Release that there. This time, this is the piece of the post, the setting post that we're using. This is going to go down inside and smush that opening there. 
it's very important to have this up and down, um, not tilted like this. So it needs to be straight. Just a little bit of a press and then it's done. Maybe. Try that again. I've got the, try the camera in my way. Tripod, that's the word. Okay, so it took just a little bit of a press and then it's done. Okay, we have it done. I can see that I made a mistake though. So we're gonna press it in and then just use our fingers to smooth it out, make it nice. I put this on backwards. I should have had this swapped so that this side was along the other side because the back of our wallet looks cool if we have a directional print here, but on this side, it's upside down. So do the opposite of what you did. That's the entire reason I have these on here so that you can see what happens when we do things the wrong way. All right, and your project is complete. If you wanted to, you would go back through and add edge painting. This, this is meant to get into the nooks and the crannies and to give yourself a solid surface that makes the wallet look seamless. So to add the base coat, you can use anything that you like. A skewer works really great or a dowel and you just simply put it on the edge here. So I'm going to go all the way around and add this in a really thin layer when I'm not looking through the camera. And you're going to want to do this until there is no evidence of there being multiple layers or plies of your fabric. So it might take two or three or even four coats, but this is how you get a really nice edge on your, on your um, raw edge products. And then you will want to lightly sand with like a high count sandpaper in between. So not like a 120, but something higher and just real lightly. You can also sand with a brown paper bag. That helps get off some of the rough bits in between your layers. So there you can see that I'm just really filling in those gaps, wiping this off right away. And then this is just a banana hook. And I'm just going to hang it there to dry. Alrighty, so we have the base coat on. And to be honest, I need more layers of it. But to get this tutorial out on time, I've just got to call it good enough. Now, I'm going to be using Giardini base coat for this tutorial for this wallet. But some of you may have already seen my video showing how you can make your own edge paint for pennies. This is the same key fob from that video. I've been using it all this time and it has held up great. There's absolutely no wear and tear. It looks amazing. So I'm completely confident with you using that method. All right. So I have put some of this Giardini edge paint in this applicator tool and we simply roll it like so so you don't have to worry about drips. So you're just going to do this and do multiple coats. Not get it everywhere. Stick it on your banana clip and let it dry. The cards are in here and then we fold our cash in half and then in half again and slide it right into the cash pocket. The snap is what keeps the cash from going too far deep and then not being able to grab it easily. We fold it and it snaps nicely. And we have another room for a card in the back. Do like this. like that we are through the pattern so I can't wait to see what you do with it in the pattern are QR codes with links to both Lindsay and me on social media share sure. all of your makes with us we would love to see them and if you come up with other modifications that turn the pattern into something even better that's amazing if you have concerns or questions and you don't have the answers you can reach out to me through the charming cheek chat room and I'll be happy to help you right away 
Thank you so much for watching and for letting me share my first little pattern baby with you. I cannot wait to see what you make. I'll be seeing you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.